Howdy folks, it's Anko Exist here, and today I figured you would take a look at Ubuntu GNOME 16.04. Um, I recently switched over to, to GNOME so I could get a feel for the desktop, because of course Unity is not going to be used in the next edition of Ubuntu, and I figured I might as well get myself uh, accustomed to it. So what you're looking at right now is the expose mode. Um, there's supposed to be an accent on the E, but Lord forbid I can't be bothered to try to type that. But that's expose mode that you're looking at now. Um, now, do keep in mind that the dock is actually a, a much larger in um, the default expose mode, but I've made some changes and I couldn't change everything back. Um, that would just be tedious for me to try to figure out what I changed in the first place. Um, but this is expose mode here. This is one of the more uh, notable things of GNOME. Uh, on the left, you can see your dock thing-ish. Um, uh, by default, I wouldn't dare call that a dock because it actually doesn't appear on your actual desktop. It only appears in expose mode, so I wouldn't really call that a dock unless you have dash to dock enabled, which is an extension you can get. In the center, you can see all of your open windows will be appropriately arranged. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can see that you have um, workspaces. Uh, here is my customized desktop. As you can see, I've got window buttons on the title bars. You can actually see I have the minimize button or a maximize button if it, you know, if the window is capable of doing that. Um, I've got the date in the very top bar where you see the date and time. That's not there by default. That applications menu in the top left is not there by default, and that dock is not there by default. So this would be your default desktop. This is what it would look like. Um, it's pretty bland. Um, all you have is your uh, your day and time at the top, uh, your activities menu, and that's that's what you're presented with when you first load into it. So, um, so we'll just go ahead and take a look at my actual desktop now. Uh, I, I kind of put it back into stock mode. I had to take a screenshot. So I'll go ahead and explain. Here is what it looks by default when you are in expose mode. As you can see, this bar is much much larger. It's kind of in your face, especially if you, have a, if you have a bigger monitor. That's really big. Um, and you can switch through things, but as you, as you can note, you can't uh, minimize. I mean, you can right-click and minimize, but um, there's no button for it by default. We actually have to enable those. Um, so, there's a couple of gripes I have with the GNOME. Um, if you're not used to it, you it will take a little bit. Um, up here, you can see you have a nice little... Um, like a little control center, I can control my microphone input, my headphone output, and the brightness of my um, laptop monitor. I've got my Ethernet controllers here, my Wi-Fi. Um, this would be for my Bluetooth, which I had it connected to my phone. Your VPN, uh, here's another Bluetooth here. Another option to turn it off. Your battery life, and then your user account, followed by settings, lock, and power. Here is your notification applet. I'm glad they moved it up here. I think they used to be down here. I wasn't. I didn't have uh, GNOME back when they were down here, but I do believe they were down here. Uh, but they put them up here along with your calendar. Then you've got your activities, and if you either just shoot your cursor up here in the left-hand corner, um, you'll automatically enter expose mode, or you can also just click it. So we'll go ahead and uh, open up the uh, the tweak tool to show you um, what you might need if you wanted it to look more like um, these pictures here. Um, if you wanted to look more like this and you actually have a dock on the side, um, it's not the most difficult thing to do. You just need a couple of uh, extensions. Um, so first thing you'll need to do is click down here and get more extensions. I already have it installed. But what you want to look for is something called dash to dock. Um, once you have that, you can just turn it on and you'll notice that everything that was on your dash, I think that's what that was called was your dash, it'll automatically be made into a dock, which I like that. Uh, you can also change some settings. Um, you can put it, you can even, even if you come from Ubuntu uh, or Unity, you can actually make it look more like the Unity, um, launcher as well, except you get a, uh, except instead of the, it, what is, what is it that I'm looking for? The search being up here, it's down here instead. Um, I just leave mine as a little, I don't leave it as panel, I put it as a dog. Uh, I like to keep auto hide on, so it'll hide itself when it's covered up by a window. Um, and that's that, I pretty much just leave everything else alone. 
something else that I like to use a lot is user themes, so I can actually change the look of the shell itself. This is actually supposed to be black, I actually forgot to turn that off, but this is supposed to be completely black. Um, but we don't really need to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> so other than things that I changed to get it looking normal, let's just go through it, some of the things you can change. So you can change your GTK Plus theme. I have mine set to paper, of course, G by default it will look something like this. Um, it doesn't look dated, it just, it's just not my my type of thing. So I, I have paper installed, so I'll just leave it a paper. And you can even install shell themes, however you do have to have um, this right here enabled for you to be able to do that. Uh, moving on from there, you can actually put icons on the desktop, I usually keep mine off, um, so it's pretty plain and simple. However, if you need folders or icons on the desktop, you can absolutely do that. You've got your background, more background options here. Um, you can change it accordingly if you needed to. I keep mine on Zoom. It's just what happens to look the best. Um, here's your extensions again. Um, this is what can change GNOME, almost a genome GNOME for you. Um, it's what is able to add these this dock here and allow you to use themes. You can add um, open an open weather extension up here. Um, I don't use that. I don't really keep it there. Um, you can add a places indicator so you know what's over here. Um, I might actually keep that there. That seems pretty seems pretty nifty. I'll keep that there. Um, you can have a window list down here. However, um, that always just looked odd to me doesn't look right and there's not a uh, well I suppose you can change some things about it but it doesn't you can't change the way it looks so that looks kind of tacky in my opinion so I'd keep that off you can change your fonts and font sizes here for your uh, title bars and things of that nature however I actually like the uh, the fonts they've used so I'll actually just just leave it at that you've got your keyboard and mouse options here um, not too much here. This is more of a tweaks for the mouse and not actual mouse settings. You've got power settings here. I actually uh, had to use this because I have uh, a laptop attached to an external monitor and sometimes I close the laptop screen and I need it to not suspend on lid close. Uh, so I have that enabled. Startup applications. This is where you can add um, applications to your startup. Um, top bar. Um, I actually like to have show date turned on so you can see it's Thursday, May 25th and it's 11.51 in the morning. Um, typing, I really don't uh, mess with all this. I just leave that alone. Um, windows, um, I actually keep these title bar buttons down here. I, uh, I turn these on because I need, I like to have a more traditional feel for my workspace. So I need title bar buttons. Um, as far as everything else, you've got your title bar actions where you can double click to maximize. Um, I have it set to where I can middle click to minimize, and then a secondary click, uh, you can get to menu, which is over here. Uh, I've also got your window action key, which if you hold down alt, you can do window actions. Um, I actually don't know any shortcuts for those, so I'm not even going to try to <laughs> try to show those, and sorry for the coughing, I'm a little, not sick, but there's a word I'm looking for, oh well. So this is the default, not the default, this is a customized version of, of GNOME, and this is how I keep it. Um, all in all, I think it's a great desktop. I don't necessarily, um, it wasn't the easiest thing to learn. I was kind of lost when I first came to it from Unity, um, so I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I was kind of stuck with that plain desktop and trying to figure out, oh, what can I do? I actually had Plank installed, and then it got a little a little odd to use when I went into expose mode so then plank would be there and then so with that little dash on the left and it was it's kind of strange but once you get the hang of GNOME I think it's actually a, a decent desktop environment um, let's go ahead and pull up some system resources here and see what we're currently running at mine's going to be a little higher due to the fact that I'm using OBS to record um, I do believe on a standard day, this is usually on about a gig, 
if I'm not recording, this should be about a gig of memory. So this isn't a lightweight desktop environment. As you can tell by my computer even struggling doing animations, like if I go over here, hit all animation, look, look at that, all applications, it takes a moment for it to be able to do it, which is why I keep um, animations off. So let me go ahead and show you where you can do that as well. I'm going to open up this tweak tool, and it's under appearance, we're just going to disable animations. So that way when I click buttons, it's just kind of there. Yeah, um, OBS is still kind of stressing the system, so it doesn't look as good to you guys, but it'll be okay. Um, CPU usage, we're going to completely ignore that. That is because of OBS. And we're going to knock off about a gig and a half from here. So I mean, usually it's about one gig at the least. That's when I started up GNOME. That's what it was on, was about a gig. So it's not a lightweight environment. But for most modern computers, anything past 2010, you should be perfectly fine. Especially if you have more than, if you have at least 4 gigs of RAM or more, um, you should be fine. Um, then again, I really wouldn't enjoy a desktop uh, environment that, you know, hogged up 1 gig of RAM when I only have 4, so that leaves you with 3 gigs free. I would probably, probably go over with something either to Unity or, <coughs> excuse me, probably go over to Unity or something more lightweight. Um, I wouldn't say that you needed the LXDE um, version of Ubuntu. I think that's a Lubuntu. I, I'm not saying that you need that, but if you're looking for a very, very lightweight desktop environment and lightweight system, um, then Lubuntu would be for you. Um, so that's, uh, oh, that's actually pretty much all I have for this video today. There's actually not much more to talk about as far as Ubuntu GNOME goes. I do believe um, everyone knows that Unity is being dropped because Canonical, I think it's Canonical, um, they're going to drop the Unity and Unity 8 desktop. I've actually tried the Unity 8 desktop even though it's not meant for computers. Oh man, I about broke my system on it. Sorry, drinking some tea here and you probably heard me swallow. I do, ap <laughs> I do apologize for that. Uh, I've got a scratchy throat today so I'm sure you can excuse me for that. Um, you know, that's that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I actually encourage you guys to uh, leave a comment below um, and tell me what desktop environment you use if you're on Linux. Um, if you're on Windows, why aren't you on Linux yet? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, no, just kidding, I'm not going to be that guy. Um, you use what suits you best. I just prefer to use Linux because I'm a, I'm a computer nut and I love screwing with stuff and you can just screw with more stuff if you're in Linux than you can in Windows. So, I do that for my own personal crackhead reasons. I'm, I mean, I've already told you guys I'm a, I'm a, I'm a computer crackhead. I said that in that, my last video, I do believe. But this is the GNOME desktop environment. Leave a comment below on what desktop environment you use. Also, tell me if I should even bother with intros and animations and all that jazz, because quite frankly, um, when I put it into a editor of some sort, I always screw up the resolution. And then it gets put on YouTube, and then <clears throat> it looks all blurry because the resolution was downscaled, and it smushes stuff together, and it just makes it look like utter shit. So, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I'm just going to make videos like I was before. I'm not going to bother with an intro. I'm not going to bother with any animations of any sort. We're just going to go straight into it because, yeah, just, just because YOLO. Just because it's easy. Not that I'm lazy. But it's easy, and you can actually see what's on my desktop. Anyways, until the next video, coexist out.